Here comes the top 10 foods you should eat to lose weight now. In this video, we're going to talk about foods that will actually help you lose weight. And by not eating these foods, you're going to actually make it harder on yourself. So why did I make this video? Why would I even care? Well, I've done exactly one thing my entire life. Well, actually two. I've helped people get in shape in Hollywood for movies and such. And I've worked with morbidly obese people for 40 years. I've seen everything come and go. I've seen every fad diet you can think of. Back in the 70s, every college had a diet. It was called the Cambridge diet or the Harvard diet. I watched my poor mom every summer you know, eat eggs for days on end and then just eat avocados and then cabbage soup and you name it. It was fad diet after fad diet. And then by the time the 90s came around, it was all infomercials. Buy this product and you're going to have rock hard abs. Buy that product and you'll have buns of steel. We've seen it all come and go. And what's happened? Well, we've gotten fatter and fatter as a nation. And now we're at an epidemic level. So what do I mean by epidemic? Well, when you look at studies, some show that two thirds of our nation is obese. And over one third is morbidly obese, which means if anything comes around, it can take you out. We just went through a pandemic. We saw what happened to people who were morbidly obese. Not good. We need to change that about our nation and the world. So I'm going to give you 10 foods that you need to eat if you're serious about controlling your weight and actually losing weight. These foods will have essential nutrients that you must have. There's going to be a lot of fat and protein, which in effect will keep you sated. Satiety is one of the biggest problems that people have when it comes to losing weight. If you're on a calorie in, calorie out diet, you may have seen it on the internet known as SECO, calorie in, calorie out. Those type of diets are what I like to call white knuckle diets. You're white knuckling your way through losing weight. I've seen people lose upwards of 150 pounds on the white knuckle style program. One of the best examples would be Weight Watchers. They're literally having you eat a deficit of calories in order to lose weight. That actually works for the time that you are willing to starve yourself. But it doesn't work long term. What we're talking about here is eating foods that will cause you to feel sated and not want to overeat. The problem is you're going to think that I'm sensationalizing some of these because they're not the normal foods you would find on a weight loss program. As a matter of fact, if you go to most doctors in the United States or registered dietitians, they would tell you that some of these foods shouldn't be on this list and that guys like me should be wearing a tinfoil hat. We've all seen it with cereals. Somehow they're heart healthy when nothing can be further from the truth. We're told that fat free foods are healthy. So in fact, something like an Oreo cookie would be healthy for you or Pop-Tarts. Why? Well, they're made with nothing but grains and sugars and they have another heart healthy thing, seed oils. Again, seed oils are horrible for your health, but these people will tell you that seed oils are actually better. So why are we told these foods are healthy if in fact they're not good for us? Well, it's money. You see, big companies, they want to make food as cheaply as possible. I don't blame them for wanting to do it. Everybody wants to make something cheap and sell it for a higher price. That's how a free market economy works. But why do we get told it's actually good for us? Well, the big companies will actually lobby Congress to get things pushed. And they will give money to people like the AHA, the American Heart Association, or the ADA, the American Diabetes Association. And then the next thing you know, you have good scientists squinting to show that studies will actually say that their products are better for your health. So we can understand what Big Food is doing, but wait, there's more. <laughs> there's Big Pharma. You see, Big Pharma comes in and they also have lobbyists and they get drugs pushed through. So now we're telling people, hey, eat the crappy food that Big Food is giving you. Don't worry about it because Big Pharma is going to come in and fix everything. So you see where the problem is? They're doing it for capital. They're doing it for themselves. When it comes to weight loss, they have zero interest in what happens to you. Be sure to stay until the very end because I'm going to give you something that you will not believe, something that will challenge what everyone else says is healthy for you, but I will tell you it's not healthy whatsoever. Number one on the list, fish. 
Now that's not so controversial. I think everyone knows that fish is actually healthy for you. One of my sayings to all of my clients over the years was, only eat fish if you're really serious about losing weight. But it's not just about the fat and the protein, which fish is full of. Fish oil is loaded with omega-3 fatty acids. Now, omega-3 fatty acids, you might have heard of that in the media a lot lately, is healthy for you. Here's the deal. We don't make it. It's an essential, which means if we don't take it, our body won't make it. So you really need to get omega-3 fatty acids in your system. And fish is a great way to do that. Fish is also great to get in extra calcium and zinc magnesium, and a lot of other minerals you just generally wouldn't get anywhere else. So eat up when it comes to fish. And when it comes to some of my favorite, cod, mackerel, salmon. Salmon is one of the most versatile fish out there. You can also think of crustacean as being a fish. So things like crab and shrimp and crawfish. I grew up in southern Louisiana, so a lot of crawfish and even lobster. So eat up. Number two, again, no controversy, chicken. Chicken is very healthy for you. Bodybuilders love chicken because they like to get a lot of protein. And one serving of chicken has somewhere between 25 and 30 grams of protein. Chicken is generally low in fat. I usually like to have a little higher fat in there because that helps with satiety. But you can get that if you eat the skin with the chicken. There's more fat in the skin. And don't just stick to the breast. For some reason, we think chicken breasts are healthier because there's a higher level of protein. Don't fall asleep on the thighs, the wings, and the legs, the brown meat, the darker meat. And if you notice when you're eating those, sometimes it's a bit crunchy. That's the ligaments. You know, a lot of people like to drink these collagen peptides and all of the stuff to get extra collagen. Well, you could get that while you're eating chicken when you're eating the crunchy bits on the wings and the legs and also the thigh. So when it comes to chicken, enjoy the skin, enjoy the ligaments, enjoy the meat, both the dark and the white. Number three, eggs. We're going to get into some slight controversy here. Some people think it's the best food in the world. Other people think that if you even look in the direction of an egg, you're going to die of cholesterol poisoning or whatever they they come up with. I was asked once, I was on the Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew show. Adam Carolla said, if you're stuck on a desert island for one month and you can only eat one food for the entire month, what would it be? And I said, the chicken egg. And he turned to Dr. Drew and Dr. Drew said, absolutely, I agree 100%. So why is the chicken egg so good? Well, it has every amino acid that we've ever discovered in science. Think about it. A chicken egg is an embryo of a chicken. So everything it takes to make a sentient being is already encapsulated in that shell. And you're going to consume that. Think about it. Everything wants chicken eggs. Uh, if you have a coop, you're going to have snakes. Why? Snakes, they don't even have Google. And they're smart enough to know that a chicken egg is very healthy. I can't say enough about it. You get six grams of protein, you get five grams of fat. It's uh, very sating. So eat chicken eggs as often as possible. On the other side of it, the controversy, it usually comes from vegan doctors. I've seen the, some of these doctors say that even if you have one egg per week, it can cause type two diabetes. And I've asked every reputable doctor if this is possibly the case. And most of them think I'm making it up until I actually show them a video of some of these doctors saying this. So don't believe the hype that chicken eggs are bad for you. And if you want to talk about the cholesterol that comes along with chicken eggs, um, cholesterol is really not a problem. We'll talk about that later on, not here, but don't worry about a chicken egg. It's very healthy for you. Enjoy. Okay, major controversy, red meat, beef. We've been told, hey, don't have so much beef. We have whole cities. Uh, New York City is doing a meatless Monday in schools and vegan Friday. They're trying to get meat out every which way. There's nothing wrong with red meat. So why all the controversy? How did it get started? I talked a lot about this in my first documentary, Fat, a documentary. When it comes to beef, it all started with a guy named Ansel Keys who had a war on beef. He wanted to prove that saturated fat was bad for you. There were some weak studies that showed correlation, but not causation. And he was able to push that through with the seven country studies. Somehow that's become part of the vernacular. 
The McGovern Committee in the 1970s, which Anthro Keyes was a part of, started to push this narrative that red meat was bad for you. And by the time 1978 came around and the McGovern Committee finally came to rest, they said, okay, less meat, more carbohydrates. And almost immediately, as a country, we started getting fat. As a matter of fact, that's when we started the food pyramid. So by the mid-1980s, we did this whole if you don't eat fat, you can't get fat thing. And that's where everything came from. That's, that's the beginning of the problem. So it all started by getting meat out of the diet, bringing in more carbohydrates. So folks, let's go back to where we were before 1978 and eat more red meat. 21 grams of protein per serving. So four ounces, think about that. Four ounces, 21 grams of protein. You're gonna get probably 15, 16 grams of fat, depending on the cut. Meat is good for you all the way around zero, and I mean zero carbohydrates. Uh, there are people out there on carnivore diets that all they do is eat meat. I'm not suggesting you have to be on this sort of diet. It's very restrictive, but a lot of people do it and their health only improves. So that's something to look at. Meat is actually very good for your health. We all love eating a filet, but a filet doesn't have a lot of marble fat in it. You get a ribeye, you get a New York strip, get some of these choices, you can get more marble fat. When you go to the store to get ground beef, you might see 92%. Don't get 92, try to get 80-20. That's 80% protein, 20% fat. Get higher fat meats, it's going to keep you feeling fuller, longer, and that's the way I like to do it. So have at it. Number five, vegetables. Oh, finally, this guy's talking my game. He's finally saying something I would agree with. Vegetables. Now, listen, not all vegetables are equal. I like eating cruciferous vegetables. Now, there are a ton of different cruciferous vegetables out there, but the main ones that you'll find in any grocery store that most people are aware of would be broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. Uh, this is not a cruciferous, but it's one of my favorites, asparagus. Uh, you wanna stick with some of these foods because you're gonna get more phytonutrients from them. Uh, they're, they're very healthy for you. You're gonna get a lot of vitamins from them. Kale is a cruciferous vegetable. Now, I don't understand why anyone would eat kale, but it's actually good for you. It's just not on my plate. Spinach is a non-cruciferous vegetable. So there's a lot of dark leafy greens that are non-cruciferous that are very healthy for you. Stick with those type of vegetables and you're gonna be better off. And while we're talking about vegetation, let's talk about root vegetables. Things like potatoes, carrots, leeks, anything that grows in the ground. These things are very high in sugar. They're very starchy. So you really wanna stay away from those. And although you may have heard differently, Pizza is not a vegetable. Number six, nuts. Nuts are very healthy for you, but you wanna get the ones that are low in carbohydrates. That means they're gonna be very high in fat and very high in protein. Uh, one of the best nuts out there would be macadamia nuts, but you can also get pecans and walnuts. Brazil nuts are actually good. I don't know why anyone would eat that nut. I, I personally can't stand it, but Brazil nuts are great. You can also have almonds and cashews. The ones at the bottom of that list that are very carby, it's actually one of my favorite nuts, but I stay away from it. Pistachios, it pains me to say that because I love pistachios, but they're high in carbs, low in fat and protein. Also, when you're looking at nuts, you, you wanna have raw nuts or dry roasted nuts. The problem is whenever they add any kind of flavor, even salt, they have to have a way to get the salt to stick to the nuts. So they will roast them using seed oils. Seed oils are horrible for your health. So when you take a nut, something that's actually very healthy, heart healthy and, and great for you, and you add a seed oil, you're now bastardizing the product. So uh, if you're in a, a gas station or something like that, you walk into the convenience store, be really careful because most of those have seed oils. You really have to read the back of the package to see what you're getting. Don't just assume because they say it's heart healthy on the front that it is. Turn it over and don't just look at the nutrition facts, look at the ingredients. You want the ingredients to say whatever the nut is and nothing else. High quality oils. This would include olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil. The oils I just mentioned are all from fruit. 
fruit oils are good for you. They, they can extract this. It's very healthy for you. Uh, we mentioned seed oils just a minute ago. The problem with seed oils is that they're rancid from the beginning. What it takes to extract these oils, the chemical process they go through, as I always tell people, it's almost the equivalent of putting gun oil or sewing machine oil on your food. These, these oils were never meant for human consumption. That includes things like uh, corn oil, when you get mazola, or any of these oils that they, people deep fry in these oils, they're actually weaponizing that oil and turning it into a trans fat. So you wanna stay away from those oils and stick to the healthy oils. Now, here's the deal. Not all oils are created equally when it comes to olive oil and avocado oil. Why? Because again, our FDA, our Food and Drug Administration, allows these oils to be cut up to 40% and still be called 100% pure olive oil or pure avocado oil. That may not be the truth. The only way you're gonna figure it out is, as we like to say, you can Google it. Uh, UC Davis has the UC Davis oil study. You can check that out. There have been books on the subject. You can go look those books up. I don't have the names with me right now, but don't just take your oil at face value. Make sure you're getting good olive oil and good avocado oil. Notice I left coconut oil out of most of the oil conversation because most coconut oils are pure. So if you go to any grocery store, you're gonna get the pure product. Just check the label to be sure. Number eight, butter. Now we have more controversy. Butter is actually very good for you. As a matter of fact, in the past couple of years, the American Heart Association has come around on butter. I actually saw it on the cover of Time Magazine at some point where they said the war on butter is now over with. It shouldn't have ever been a war. You see, butter has always been good for us. The stuff that's bad is the stuff that they told us was heart healthy. These margarines, these I can't believe it's almost might not be butter stuff, those were the ones that are bad for you. Those things are made with seed oils. Those things are made with trans fats. So the thing that they told you was healthy is actually bad. And not only is butter good for you and tastes delicious, butter is also another oil you can use when you're cooking. So don't be afraid of butter. Enjoy. Number nine, avocados, one of my favorite fruit. People always say, do you eat fruit? Yeah, I like to eat the low glycemic stuff and avocados fall into that category. It's low glycemic, even though it has somewhere between 12 and 13 grams of carbohydrates, depending on the size of the avocado. But it also has upwards of 22 to 25 grams of fat and a fair amount of protein. So avocados are very good for you. It'll keep you your glycemic index low and, and they're delicious and versatile. You can use them in all different kinds of food. I've used avocados with breakfast in the morning. It goes well with eggs. You can actually also make guacamole with it and do eggs and breakfast dishes with that. And of course, guacamole also works well when you wanna do Mexican fiesta type thing later in the day. It's nutritious, it's delicious. It sounds like I'm doing an ad for the avocado people of the world, but it's true. I love avocados and it's a great food when you wanna control your weight. And number 10, olives. Some people go, aren't they fattening? I've heard that my entire life. Olives are fattening, right? Well, they do have a lot of great fat in them and they're very low in carbohydrate. Again, great for weight loss. So olives are on the list of great foods to eat if you wanna control your weight. It's a fruit and I've always said one of my favorite fruit juices is olive juice because in fact, it's olive oil, which we talked about earlier in the list. So which are better? The green ones, the black ones? Eat up, they're both good for you. Green olives are just as good for you as black olives. I personally like the Kalamata olives the best, but you may, you may say differently. And now for a little something extra, number 11 in our list of 10, the food you should never eat if you wanna lose weight, tropical fruit. The average cup of tropical fruit has 57 grams of carbohydrates. Let me put that in perspective for you. A 12 ounce Coca-Cola only has 39 grams of carbohydrates. So this is much higher than a Coke. As a matter of fact, I remember as a kid, Coca-Colas didn't even come in 12 ounce cans. 
They came in seven ounce bottles. They used to put these in machines that would spew them out. And I would only have like five or six of those a year. As a matter of fact, the only time I ever had a Coke was when my dad took me to get a haircut. So let's say I got 12 haircuts per year. That was less than one Coke today. But this is not about Coke. This is about tropical fruit. If you think you're eating tropical fruit in order to stay healthy, think again. Now I get it, I mentioned avocado earlier, and that's a tropical fruit. Well, that's one you can eat, it was on my list. But most tropical fruits are very high in sugar. So you'll say to me, what about other fruit? Fruits come in all varieties. So some are actually okay for you when some aren't. Remember we mentioned earlier, the olives, that's a fruit. We mentioned avocado, that's a fruit. But there are other fruits you can have. Berries, for instance, are very low glycemic, and you can enjoy those. Cherries on that list also, fresh cherries. Now we're not talking about the ones you buy in the store in a jar that have a ton of high fructose corn syrup in it. We're talking about actual fresh cherries in season. Other fruit you can look at is the occasional pear or apple. You might wanna stay away from citrus fruit for a bit if you're trying to lose weight, because again, you're getting into the higher sugar. Even though some of these fruits have a lot of fiber and a lot of water, there's no reason to overload your liver with more sugar than you need. And while I'm on the subject, stay away from all fruit juice, except for the aforementioned olive oil, which is the one fruit juice you can have. Fruit juice is higher in sugar than that aforementioned can of Coca-Cola. So you wanna stay away from fruit juice. I know it's supposed to have vitamins in it, it's good for your health and whatnot. Some people think that orange juice actually comes with a lot of calcium. Well, that calcium is fortified. Whenever you see fortified with anything, you might see that with breakfast cereals, fortified with eight vitamins and iron, which I've always wondered about. Which ones did they pick? Because there are 13 essential vitamins, but they picked just a few vitamins and threw iron in it and it was fortified. And if you saw how they went through that process, it's probably not a very good vitamin for you anyway. They just spray it right onto the flakes. The same thing happens when they fortify things like orange juice and grape juice and everything else. So by cutting out fruit juice, you can do things like lower your A1Cs, which is a marker for type two diabetes. You can get rid of fatty liver disease. It will help you control your weight. It's not the only thing, but it will help you control your weight if you're doing everything else correctly. So stay away from fruit juice the same way you would stay away from any sort of soda or any other sugary drink. Listen, folks, I don't put these lists together for my health. I put them together for your health. I always say on my podcast, your good intentions have been stolen. I'm just here to help you get them back. You're here because you wanna lose weight and get healthy. So go watch my video, the top 10 foods you should stop eating immediately.